Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create interactive backgrounds to help you create engaging content for your uh, viewers, whether you're doing that on social media or on YouTube. Now, the goal of this uh, tutorial is to show you how to utilize a couple of tools um, in order to extract different layers of your backgrounds to create interactive backgrounds so you can have your characters interact with these backgrounds. And I wanna show you a quick example before we dive into this. So let me go inside the Create Studio page right here. And as you can see here, so I got a couple of examples for you. One is this background, and then I have another one right here um, on the canvas. The difference between both is that this image is a single layer um, image that I cannot manipulate or make any adjustments to it, which means that I cannot move any of the objects um, e exactly how I want it on this image because it's just a static image versus this image that it's a grouped up consists of multiple layers that I can adjust and play with the objects inside the background and have my characters interact with it easily. So let me go ahead and show you that. So if I double click the group right here to get inside that group, I can easily just move the you know objects around just like this chair. I can just move it on the right side, flip it to make it on the right side, just like that. I can also move the desk around just like this and position it on the left uh, corner of the background. I can do that for this chair as well and have it just right behind this uh, desk right there. And the cool thing is that I can get my characters to interact with this background. So I can get uh, one of my characters to have them or have her sit on that chair, look like working, and that will be amazing. I can do the same for this chair as well and have a character sit on that chair uh, that will look a lot more engaging. So the problem that we currently have is that the majority of the backgrounds inside CS's library is that they are all one layered backgrounds, which means that you cannot manipulate these images and you cannot move things around just like with these uh, objects inside of this background. We only have a few. So amongst the list of the images that we have inside the library, uh, regardless of the style, 3D, 2D, classy or whatever, uh, we only have a few of those that are grouped up consist of multiple layers that we can play with. This is where the tutorial is going to help you uh, show you how to extract different layers of your backgrounds to create engaging content and make your background more interactive. So you can also have your characters interact with those uh, different layers in the background. So for example, if you want to have you know, if you want to have something like this, where you can have your character just behind an object and interact with it to create something really cool to engage your audience and then attract people's attention, that's basically the goal. So let me go ahead and take you into the tools that I'm going to show you how to utilize today. The first one is a website, which is freepick.com. Uh, freepick.com is a graphics website that provides vectors, images, icons, videos, you know, um, and different other uh, categories that you can choose from. So now if you are not a subscriber, uh, what you want to do is use their free version, but I want you to be careful with uh, using their content. Their only policy about using content is to give them, you know, attribution that you are using their uh, content in your videos. So that's the one thing that you need to keep in mind. Other than that, if you're a premium user, just like me, you don't have to worry about that. We will go onto the website and show you um, how to find or source images from the website. And then I'm gonna go on to the other tool to show you how you can use it, export different layers of your background and be able to create interactive backgrounds. So let's start with um, the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for a cave. I'm gonna use the example I, I use in my previous video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it up um, in the video so you can go ahead and watch it and then come back to this tutorial and um, continue to watch and, and learn something new. So I'm going to type in cave um, illustration background like this, and then I'm gonna hit enter. If you are not a subscriber on their free version, you can simply just come on the right panel of the website 
under license you simply need to click on the free icon right here just to give you all the free images that you can use and give attribution to the images so i'm going to scroll down and then find the image that i was using and this seems to be this is the, one of the images that i used in my previous video so what i'm going to do is i will go ahead and, and import uh, download this image first and then i'll show you how to extract different layers of the background now as you can see that this image uh provides the source file so this is what we need we need an eps or a psd file to be able to extract multiple layers of the background and be able to create interactive backgrounds so make sure that you when you are about to download an image it doesn't only say jpg but it must have the eps file or the psd file which basically are the source files that allows you to manipulate the image, extract different layers and, and work with it the way you want to. So let's go ahead and download this image and save it on my desktop. And then we will start using the, the other tools. So I'm gonna create a new folder right here, um, call this free pick. And then I'm gonna go inside that one and then hit save. So this is the image that we've got right here um and as you can see that we have three different uh files so we got the uh, actual file then we have this the source file and then the image which is the jpg one all we want is this one that says dot ai or eps file so before we drag it this into the tool that i'm about to explain to you let me go ahead and show you what this tool is the tool is called photo p Photo P is a Photoshop similar application that has most of the features available in Photoshop, except that Photo P is an open source, which means that it's totally free. And the cool thing about it, that it's a web application, which means you can use it on your PC, on your tablet, or on your phone. The other cool thing about the website is that once you visit the website, you can work offline, which means you do not need internet connection to be able to adjust images or manipulate them inside the software. So yeah, pretty cool that we have a web application and open source, totally free that we can use um, and manipulate our image. So now, as you can see here that this website, it's a similar Photoshop application. So it supports PSD files. It supports .ai files, which are the, uh, Victor files, um, AutoCAD, and then Sketch, PDF, so on and so forth. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and grab the source file, which is the EPS file that we downloaded and drag it on, onto the website right here to open it up and then start extracting different layers extract this file so right click extract here and then again so these are the three files so we got the zip file the source file that we were looking for which is the eps and that is the image that we've got so this is the jpg image which is a static image that i cannot adjust or extract different layers of it if i want to use it then that means i'm going to use it as is but that's not the goal here so i'm going to go back right here grab the source file go into my browser right here on the website drop it on there and it should just load up okay cool we have it up right here so this is the image that i want to work with the steps are pretty simple uh, all you got to do is just follow my instructions and you'll be able to extract different layers of the background so to do that what we want to do is we go want to go onto the right panel of the website and then we look under the the layers tab right here and this is where all the layers goes into. So we, if we look here, we have layer number one, and then we have an artboard layer. So we don't, we don't want to bother about this. Our main goal is to look for this one, the layer number one. So I'm going to click the drop down menu right here to open this up. And then I'm going to uh, click on that one more time to open this up to view all other groups inside this image. So now you can see here that I've got all these layers that I can export individually and be able to create interactive uh interactive backgrounds so let's go ahead and start clicking on the the eye icon right here to make the um to make objects invisible invisible just by ticking this eye icon like this so when i click the first one that's you know for for this group it shows me that this uh, this was the front tree on the right side so if I, i'm going to go ahead and click it one more time this is the tree right that i i was clicking to make it invisible 
So what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and make everything invisible because the first thing I want to export will be the actual background. And then I'm going to extract uh, other layers like the tree, the cave, the mountains and the clouds if I want to. Uh, but for me or for my previous example, I used, I designed the cloud images from Sia, so I didn't need those. Now let's go ahead and continue to click on the eye icon for the rest of those so I can hide everything else. Uh, for this background, just like this right here. And then I'm going to keep doing that so I can take off the cloud images like that right here. And then now I am left off with this gradient color background. So this one, in order to go ahead and export it, all I got to do is just go into the top left corner where it says file right here, click on it, and then I want to export as. So choose export as. Now, because this is going to be used as a background, I want to export it as a JPG file. So I'm going to go in and click on JPG and hit save. And then I want to save it into that folder. So we're going to go ahead and, and rename this one, call it background, for example. So BG stands for background. Next up, I want to start um, exporting different layers of the background. So I'm going to go ahead and start making other layers visible on top of the on top of the background so if i want to have those wavy lines and on the sky i can do that uh, i can export these by by themselves so what i can do is simply just hide the background and then now i only have this uh wavy line so you may not be able to see clearly um because it's slow in opacity so what i'm going to do is i'll go ahead and export this image as well i'm going to go into file right here on the top left corner and then export as and this time i'm going to choose png because i want to export the image with a transparent background so i'm going to click that and then now i can see that i'm about to export my image with a transparent background so all i have to do is give it a name if i want to or just simply hit save and it would actually prompt me to give it to give it a name while saving it so let's just call this you know wave line number one because we have another one so hit save and then now we have it saved up so i'm going to click on uh, go on to the layers tab again right here make this one invisible go on with the next one and i'm going to do the same thing so i'm going to go and export as png right here save and then i'm going to use wave line but just make this one number two hit save and there you have it now for the rest of the layers right here so we can see that we have the cloud images right there but I, i'm not going to use any of the cloud images i'm just going to design those inside cs if you will so let's go ahead and see about the rest of the layers so this is the uh mountain layer i'm going to continue to go on and and get the other so the, these are the trees right here let's see if we have other images for the for the ground and then the mountain as well uh we so we continue on making things visible um, to see what exactly do we want to export out of this image. So we continue with this one and I may want to, okay, so that is the cave um, image. I'll just keep it. And these are the trees. Okay. So I'm just going to export this part of the image as it is with the mountains right here and a few rocks and the ground. So I'm going to go uh, onto the file and uh, click on file, export as PNG. And that would, and I'm going to go ahead and save it and then call this uh bg number two right here or i could just call it ground and mountains whatever it is that you want to call it doesn't matter so we got that saved now we want to start exporting uh trees and the cave uh, image so i'm going to go and make those invisible one more time right here and then that there was the um the cave one <laughs> okay it's right there okay that's the cave one now in order for you to stay organized uh that's one thing one tip to know about is you can simply just double click the layer right here to give it a name um just to, so you can stay organized and not really get lost just like i did while looking for the uh cave so maybe you want to go onto this list first and give each group and names just so you know exactly what this is for so it's much easier for you while exporting um and it would actually speed up your workflow so i'm going to call this one uh cave right here hit enter and now i have it renamed so you can do the same for the rest of the groups just by double clicking on the name right here give it a name so you, you're you're more organized 
Now I'm going to go ahead and export this image. Now, as you can see that I'm not making it, I'm not adjusting the size of the image um, to make it about the same size of the uh, cave or any other object. And the reason for that, it's best to keep it that way so that when you scale it up on the, uh, on the canvas inside CS, it would still give you the same exact size of the actual image and not really going to mess up with sizes at all. So it's best just to keep it that way. And then we're going to go under the file button right here, export as PNG, save, and then we call this one cave right here. We save it and voila, we have that covered. Next up, we want to go ahead and start um, exporting the some of the trees right here. So I may not use all of them just for the sake of the, tu the tutorial. I'm going to export this one right here. Um, so file, go on to export as PNG, save, and that would be front tree hit enter and there you have it um okay this all right let me go ahead and now uh, export that one as well okay so we go back right here export as a png save and then we call this one tree like that again i'm not going to save all the other all other trees on the background just for the sake of the tutorial i want to take you back to see us right here where i want to show you now that we got all the images saved I'm going to go ahead and start building and designing my scenes. So let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, find the folder, free pick. These are the images. So I got this one right here, this and that, these, and then the wave lines right there. So I select all the images on uh, my folder right here. And then I'm going to drag all these guys to drop them into the software. And they will just be imported directly into my project media files. So now I can start designing my background. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a background that I got in the first place. That would be my background right there. And then I'm going to have the second image for the mountains. So as you can see here, some some of the images when you import into the uh, into the onto the canvas, they're not going to give you a full width. So this is when I suggested that you export images with the same size and not really adjust their size, keep it the way it is. So when you scale it up just like that, it would still give you the same exact size of how it was on the actual image on the website. Now let's go back right here onto the media files again and then start dragging things. So I'm gonna get this wave line right there, all right? And then that one needs to be underneath. So see, that's what I'm talking about is making these, is working with these different layers um, so that you can adjust them exactly how you want. So I'm going to drag this background, the main background, one track below like this. I'm going to drag the, and then I'm going to get the, the wave number one right here in the middle so that it's behind the mountains. I'm also going to uh, go ahead and right click right next to the wave uh, line right here and then choose add track above so I can add the other one that I imported. So I have this one wave line number two, go here add that. And then that one is going to be right behind the mountains as well. So looking at that, so everything looks cool until now. And then uh, let's go ahead and continue importing or dragging other image, images that we have got. So now we can go ahead and grab the cave image right here and as you can see so this is the cave image once i scale it up it's going to be positioned exactly where it was on the background right so this is really cool going back in the media files and then i'm going to go and grab this image right here right this is going and then i'm going to scale it up it's going to be positioned exactly where it was in the image same thing i'll go ahead with this one and for this one i mean i don't want it to be behind the mountain I want to use this to be right in front right here. But as you can see, because this image, um, you know, the frame around it is too much because it was set to a landscape mode. So the cool thing about CS is that you can actually edit and crop images right from the, within the application. How do you do this? You can simply just double click the image right here and that allows you to crop the image. So we're just going to take off the empty space that's unnecessary in this image. So we're going to go ahead and do that right here. Go back and then adjust this one right here from the top as well like that. And then now we have a smaller frame. This is much easier for me to adjust and like make it bigger or smaller and move it around easily without having to worry about that much space that was there before cropping it. So let's go ahead and uh, extend, um, scale this up a little bit more and have it right here. So now I have my scene ready for me. Let me go ahead and start um, 
you know, adding a character to show you how you can get your characters to interact with those different layers. So now I want to add a character that's going to walk from the right side to the left side, but the character needs to be behind both trees, this one and this one as well. So um, let's go ahead and do that right now. Go open up our studio right here, and then I'm gonna go to the classy, uh, go to characters first, and then go to classy right here. And then we're gonna pick up one of the characters. So let's go with the uh, young boy right there. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go under settings to change the action from wave to walking right here. And I'm also going to flip him so he walks into the right direction. And because I'm going to have my character start walking from the right side outside the scene, um, I do not want the first pose where he's looking at the camera. So what I can do is I can come here on the character's track in the timeline where it says walking, which is the walking action for the character right click that and then i want to disable starting animation so that my character starts walking immediately without looking at the camera because you know that's unnecessary so i'm going to have my character start from right here on the uh, right side outside my scene i'm going to expand the action simply just by hovering over this little little vertical line towards the end of the character's uh, layer extend the action a little bit more to line it up with the rest of the layers right here and then I'm going to start adding some keyframes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Ex zoom in on my timeline right here. Just move one frame forward so I can easily click on my first keyframes and move forward from there. So add, um, so click, select my character, add animation. Under properties, we choose position. And the best easing effect for the walking action is usually linear because that's the smoothest easing effect to make your character look natural while walking from one direction to another, one position to another. Cool. So we now have our keyframe set up on the character's track. The first keyframe represents the starting point where we want to have him start from the right side outside the scene right there. And then the second keyframe, which um, which we want our character to walk across the entire screen going on to the other way of the screen, like on the left side, outside the scene as well. Before adjusting the keyframe, I wanna make sure that I move my playhead forward in time just like that until I see where my character stops walking or stop moving his legs and turn to the camera. If you can't see better right here, you can simply just click anywhere. And then when you look at the right panel right here under canvas mode, you wanna click on show to be able to see everything that's outside the canvas in full color. That way you can see better. So let's go ahead and keep moving the our playhead to see where the character start, you know, stops walking. So it looks like right, right about here. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll go ahead and hold lift click on the second keyframe right here. I'm gonna drag it all the way to where my uh, playhead is at right here. And with my keyboard, I'm gonna hold shift on the left arrow key, and then I'm going to move my character slide him to the left side like that and that's it so pretty cool go back right here and then i want to may want to go ahead and click anywhere and then on the canvas mode click on hide just so i know that these are my uh canvas uh, boundaries and i don't i don't want to create things that goes outside of it um, so let's go back right here play this for you so as we can see that our character is going to walk from one direction to another the only thing that's left right now is we want to have our character interact with the background layers so as you can see our character is walking on top of the first tree and the second tree so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get our character to be behind both trees so in order to do that so this is so we have a couple of trees right here this one and then that one so what i'm going to do this is the first tree that we add a tree that we added right there i want to come right here right next to it with my mouse hovering over in this area right click and then i want to add a track below and then simply just drag my character's layer in between right here so basically underneath both trees so when we go back press play now we will have our character walking behind both um, trees as you can see which is so easy to do so if you want to continue to build on the rest of the image uh, adding other trees like i said so we already have them we can simply go ahead go back and export these images and position those guys behind the mountain. And then the reason we're doing that and exporting all other layers in the background, because you know when we go ahead and like, if we want to customize the image how we want it to be, it's so easy to have as many layers as we could 
to be able to adjust the layers, you know, how we wanted them to be. Um, so for example, now that I want it, I have my image set up, let's say, for example, I want to create um, a cloud, right? So I'm going to go ahead under shift right here, look for a cloud image. And let's say I'm going to use that one. So just click it and add it. And then I'm going to change its color to white right there. And I'm going to resize this guy right here and say, I want this cloud to move from here to the right side, but I want it right behind the mountain right there. So let me go ahead and track, drag the um, image layer to line it up with the rest of the layers first. And then I want to look at where the uh, image of the mountains are. So it looks like it's going to be this one. So all I got to do is just right click here and I'm going to add a track above, um, below right here. And then I'm going to go and expand my timeline right there drag this one right here in the middle as you can see that we got our cloud uh right behind the mountain so i can easily just go ahead and animate this guy right click on that one right here go into add position um add a position animation easing would be linear and then we could just go ahead and uh, drag the second keyframe all the way to the right side right here make sure it's selected it's turned in blue so you know it's going to take effect with my keyboard hold shift and then the right arrow and i can simply just drag my cloud all the way to the right side just like that so that's how you can easily you know create different layers and animate your layers exactly how you want them to be you can even you know make a, a 3d parallax effect so while your character is moving from the right side to the right side you can actually have those trees uh move just a little to the right so it creates a little bit of a 3d parallax effect making your scene more engaging and more attractive so that's basically how you can utilize those tools uh, freepick.com and photo p in order to extract different layers and create really engaging content for your viewers on social media and youtube uh, thank you so much for watching i hope this you found this helpful please let me know if you have any questions in the comment below and uh, don't forget to subscribe like and share this video and i'll see you on the next one